And members will return to the chamber to vote again on its seventh ballot. News Nation's Joe Cleo live for us from the uh, Capitol Hill with a scoop on all of the action going on in the House. Joe, what are we learning now? Yeah, that's right, Natasha. As we get into now day three without a speaker and without a functioning Congress, we do have a, a bit of a scoop now, able to confirm with two uh, high level staffers and one member of Congress, uh, Congressman Davidson from Ohio, who told us today that there is something that's being considered uh, that would maybe lessen the threshold for winning the vote for speaker from a majority of the House to just a plurality, meaning whoever would get the most votes would win. Now, again, it may not be likely that they go that route because in order for that to happen, um, Kevin McCarthy and his allies would need many of the 20 Republicans who've been voting against him to agree to do that. And frankly, it's not certain that that would be the case, but it does give you an indication uh, about the extent to which McCarthy and his allies are considering options now because at this point, they do not have the necessary votes to move forward and win the speakership bid, Natasha. So certainly it is telling as to where we are right now. What we can tell you also from our Republican sources that we've been speaking with last night and this morning is that Kevin McCarthy feels a bit more confident, and so do his allies today, than they did yesterday. The reason that is is because uh, we've been told that last night there was this negotiation behind closed doors between McCarthy, between some of his allies, and some of those 20 Republicans who have been voting against him. We're told that uh, Leader McCarthy offered another round of concessions, and many of his allies think that they've been able to win over at least some of the support from those holdouts. Not all of them, but some. So that is, in their view, some progress. And we did speak to one Republican uh, just a little while ago, Congressman Troy Nels, who is in the McCarthy camp, about this entire situation and these new concessions. Here's what he told us. Uh, so I think McCarthy is making several concessions uh, to try to get some of those 20 uh, uh, on his team. Um, it, they're Freedom Caucus members. I am a member of that Freedom Caucus, but I don't believe that the, the battle we're fa uh, raging right now is the battle we should be. We, we can win the war and not win this battle. And, and Joe, what about the swearing? I should mention in? that. I'm sorry, Joe. Please, please continue. I'm I, I was just going to say, important to mention that the congressman you just heard from is one of the more conservative members in the House. He's in that House Freedom Caucus. So he and, you know, the likes of uh, Boebert and Matt Gates and others, you know, typically they align on issues like this. But in this case, he and some others are in the McCarthy camp. The others are not. Appreciate that. And, and again, sorry for the interruption. Joe, I do want to ask, what about the swearing-in ceremony now? It's been on hold for all of this time. Are incoming lawmakers essentially just sitting there waiting as this plays out? Yeah, they are. And that means members who have been in Congress before. That also means members elect who have not. And so what you're getting a, a look at now are members with, you know, literally their children, uh, spouses. Uh, they are all there because they wait for these moments where the swearing-in happens and you get that sort of iconic picture. You've seen a lot of uh, actual babies on the House floor these days uh, over the last, you know, 72 hours because they are waiting for this to wrap up. And until it does, no one is sworn in. So uh, we actually took an elevator ride yesterday with uh, that cute four-month-old baby you're seeing right there. That is uh, Congressman Jimmy Gomez's uh, newborn. So, um, Natasha, a lot of people waiting, and it's not just adults. you got a lot of kids on the floor also hoping that this comes to an end. Uh, so they can, you know, get moving on with this process as well. <laughs> it's very sweet. That's a sweet look on the ground there. And Joe, what is the reaction, meanwhile, from both parties as a decision on the speaker is delayed yet again? Uh, you know, some Republicans, as you heard yesterday, say, look, this is democracy and it's messy. It is this way by design. It's a feature and not a bug. Uh, you're hearing some other Republicans and some Democrats, including President Biden, as he played off the top, that say, frankly, this is embarrassing. It's not a good look for the U.S., especially when it comes to how China and Russia and other authoritarian-led countries are viewing American democracy right now. I should also mention you've got this group of Republicans in the national security sphere, Natasha, people in the intel community, uh, people in the armed services community who say this is a threat to national security, not being ready to handle, you know, God forbid, a terrorist attack or any kind of national emergency because right now we literally don't have a seated United States House who would be able to react with 
money or funding or emergency orders if something like that were to come up. So there is serious concern here, and I don't think you can dismiss the national security threat that a lot of these lawmakers are bringing up, many of them on the Republican side, Natasha. I do appreciate that. Joe Khalil live for us in D.C. Thank you so much for that breaking update. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.